Um, I've been here a long time since I did Arcos the last six semesters. So I've been here a long time, I guess. And today I'm just going to give a inspirational talk or something resembling one for new people. So I started out in the fall of 2008 with Arcos. One day I was doing homework with my friend, Rob, if anybody remembers him. And we were supposed to be doing physics, which was the next day. It was about 3 a.m. We weren't really getting anywhere. Then I ask him some questions, and then he informs me he's running a composite and window manager. The next day in class, when we don't have our homework done, he informs me he's running it in JavaScript. And, that was, and then he ended up talking to, I think, Professor Ingalls, who introduces the Morphe who refers to Arcos. So our original project was we were going to replace this, everyone's favorite compositing window manager. Um, most famous for a cube and wobbly windows, and it's kind of awful, and it doesn't really work that well. And inside it gets even worse. Um, Rob knew this because he was one of the main compass developers for a long time, and he wanted to just replace the whole thing. So our original project was to write, replace, write a replacement for compass. However, we, what we ended up producing was something related to the squirrel fish, which I also have a custom-made shirt for. Uh, because he wanted, to, he wanted to write a window manager that was scriptable in JavaScript and to do this, we needed a binding to a JavaScript engine. So we went with WebKit's JavaScript core, also known as Squirrelfish Extreme. So we started writing what we ended up calling seed, because we had decided to put the name orange for the window manager in an orange which would have seeds inside of it, and then the window decorations which go on the outside would be peeled. However, only one of these components ended up actually existing. So we attended a at the beginning, I had no idea what was going on. Um, Tim and Rob, who were working on the seed, I'm not exactly sure how exactly got dragged into it, because I had no idea what was, about what Aiken was. But they brought me to the GNOME Summit, which was in October. And I spent the whole weekend there with all the GNOME people, and I was unable to just build seed simply. I uh, had no idea what was going on. I couldn't like use auto tools or figure out why things weren't building or how to like install dependencies and things. And I had no idea what was going on. So I pretty much sat there doing nothing productive, and occasionally listening to the flame wars happening in real life, which was fun. Um, and lots of arguing between people with weird accents about Radeon drivers. That's also my favorite part of the Gnome Summit. Um, so, also met Mark Shuttleworth there, and Rob's talking about this, all this important stuff and interesting things, and I'm just there, and I don't know what's going on. So I was kind of dumb. So then I started actually making, trying to make contributions to Seed. So I started out with simple things like, I originally wrote this version of Lights Off. It's a game where you press the lights until they go away. Which then later Tim Raider wrote in Clutter and is actually in GNOME games now. So I wrote the original GNOME version in GTK, but that was completely replaced. So again, I still didn't really know what was going on because I used GTK and not pretty things. Uh, so then this, then I need to make contributions to actual core seed. This was my first patch to actual seed. This is seed.quit. It's supposed to exit seed. Um, so it just needs to really call it exit. However, I managed to screw it up horribly, and I, I ended up fixing this twice. This doesn't actually work. It does, if you don't give it the right arguments, it just, you, you can't give it an exit code to quit. And it doesn't work in some cases, and this is just completely wrong and horrible. <coughs> um, I, I don't know. This was just like a horribly embarrassing, broken thing I wrote. Then I wrote some other little pieces that I didn't know, really understand what they were. And then, Seed was going along well and it was going to become part of GNOME, even though there was like a competitor because there was like an argument at the GNOME Summit about whether they would go with our thing, Seed, with WebKit, or Mozilla's GJS thing, using the Mozilla JavaScript engine. But we, we're still in the state where we have both, but there's still lots of arguing, so that's like a common open source thing. Like, there's two things do basically the same thing, but nobody can like motivate for everyone to go to one side or the other. Um, so then, the next semester, we decided we want, well, I guess I didn't because I had zero interest in this, but <coughs> to write Ease, the presentation program. This is the original version of Ease, which, if you read the comment at the top, was written in the intent for being the most insecure possible presentation file format for now. Like, really, really, actually worse than PowerPoint, seriously. Basically, you would just have a bunch of JavaScript, and that was your presentation. You would write JavaScript, and that semester we didn't actually do our actual project. We just wrote, just sort of worked on C, and happened to have this terrible 
presentation scripting thing. So then after that, I did GSOC. So I was off by my own, and I worked on my own Scilab thing for some of code. And I started to like get a better feel for what I was doing on my own there. Um, my mentor, like, already, I guess, frame shell kind of library. Well, not like shells, it's just like a fragment or at least a stub of a library. And I sort of started filling it out and I learned how <coughs> to do actual real development on things, which you don't actually learn in any classes. Like, none of the computer science classes teach you how to use like a build system or really anything about programming. <laughs> so then after that, I learned Haskell at some point. And I started off on another project and C had kind of gone off on its own. No, none of us really work on C anymore, but there are a bunch of people who have taken over the project and are working on it for us. So that's another cool thing if you have a successful project. And you don't need to work on it anymore. You can do other things. <laughs> then, so then I learned lots of things from this. From this, I actually finally understood what C does. Like, I never really had an idea what was going on. I was just like, most of what my countries in C were were copy and pasting things and not really having much of a clue what was going on. Because there are a lot of like type conversion things that you need to that are almost the same. Each type is suddenly different, and you just change small things. But from doing this project on my own, I learned pretty much everything you need to know about G objects and all the things I need to know for seed. Um, but nobody actually, uh, to date, only three people have shown interest in this project, um, excluding myself. But I guess I learned a bunch of things about language bindings and languages and <coughs> how the original project actually worked. So then I moved on to Milky Way at Home, which originally wasn't my Arcos project, but I ended up working on it for Arcos because it's what I ended up spending all my time on anyway. So now I'm pretty much in charge of that and I do all of the client work. And now I'm no longer afraid of just jumping into random other things. Like for April Fool's Day, I would I just jumped into building this new iPhone, this joke of an iPhone application, and porting things to iOS, uh, having no idea what it was doing. Where uh, th three years prior, I would have <coughs> was completely unable to just build anything. So I guess like I learned how to just attack new things. Uh, I'm no longer afraid of libraries. I used to be afraid of like trying to use other things that I need to learn how to use. But at some point, that you. I've just broken of that, where I'll just jump in and use pretty much anything at any time I want. And I'll also look into the actual source of the library to figure out what's not working at different times. It's very useful to use open source libraries, because you will inevitably end up with a situation where you want to figure out what's going on, and you'll need to look at the source for it. That's a good advantage over some broken, some certain popular proprietary frameworks where you need to, like, hope there's some information on the public mirror of <coughs> a certain fruit company's bug tracker that people have put there because they won't like tell you what's broken or anything. Um, then I guess I learned that how, it's important to learn how to use all the necessary tools just to like actually work on a project, like Git, um, and just any build system really, <coughs> if you're using something that actually uses a build system. But, um, Bisect is really my favorite thing about Git. It saved me so much pain over the years. It's like I broke something three months ago. What was it? And when did I break this? And then I find out, oh, I broke this on July 30th. Uh, 30th. And that's after about two hours of work. Or what I thought it would take a week. And it's nice. So you should learn how to use all of your tools and don't just like, don't do things like, I just want to get this done. I don't want to learn how to use whatever tool would help me with this because it will help you in the long term with lots of other things. So eventually, at some point of a successful project, people will send you patches. That's a Haskell patch and a C patch, but it's only a two-star patch. So, but I guess you need to have kind of a successful project going <coughs> that actually happens. For, um, C, but now, um, I guess Clutter HS would be a, a more of a failed project since nobody's actually contributed to it. But C is a more successful project because now we don't even need to work on it anymore. Other people are doing that all for us. So, I guess that's the moral of the story is you've learned how to do things over time just by being, forcing yourself to be attached and, or in proximity to other people doing things. So, being here is good and observing other people and working with other people is a good way to go from having no idea what you're doing and 
just be able to do things more productively, I guess. Thank you.